Hi all, welcome to module P7. In this module, we'll be doing some basic interactions with the DBMS. We'll be using the DBMS via typical management console, a web-based management console. In this case, the console is called Adminer, but uh, similar consoles are PHP MyAdmin for uh, MySQL and say RockMongo for MongoDB. We're going to create a few tables and run a few create, read, update, delete, also known as CRUD. Uh, we're going to run some CRUD operations via the DBMS on, the, on our database. To quickly recap what we've learned so far, we've learned that we need to separate code and data in our applications. We also need, we've also learned that we need a convenient way of reading, writing, uh, writing to and storing persistent data uh, into, a, into what we call a database. And um, applications that allow us to do this easily are called DBMSs. So we're going to log into our database via a web app um, and via the management console app, which is called Adminer. We're going to create the tables that model the user and the articles from the last module. And then we're going to run some common operation on our data. To generate your database credentials, head to the cloud.imad.hasra.io console. So I click on create database credentials and I get um, the credentials to access my database. To head to the database console, click on this link. I have to copy my credentials here. So let's get the username. And let's get the password. The database that you are logging into is the same as the username. So we enter that as well. I say I want to stay logged in and I click on login. I save the password. Now you can see that um, we have access to a database. So we already have a database and a database is called, in my case, um, Coco98. Let's um, create a new table. So let's start off by creating a user table. So table name is called user. The first column is an ID and I'll let the ID be an integer. Uh, most databases, especially um, relational databases, have an option of making a column auto-incrementing. And auto-incrementing means that the value of ID will keep increasing um, whenever a new row is inserted. And so we'll see uh, how that works in a bit. And then I'll have a username, which will be a text column. I'll have a name, which will also be a text column. I can have an email, also a text column. Right, so let's save this. Um, now let's create so we can see that the structure of the table is that there is an ID, username, name, and email. These are the columns, and you can see the types of the columns. Let's add a primary key, and a primary key will allow us to identify a particular row in this table uniquely. Now, people might have usernames that are the same, or the names that are the same, and people might even have similar emails, right? But I want the ID to be unique. So because the ID is unique, we'll create a primary key on the ID column. So I add an index, and I say index type is primary. I set the column to ID and I save it. And so now I have a primary key. You can see that in the indexes list, there is an index called primary key, which is the ID column. Let's try to insert some data. Um, I won't insert anything in the ID, right? And because the def by default, it will increase automatically. Um, I'll set the username to Coco98, my name to Gopal. Right, and I save this. You can see that a row has been added and the ID is set to one automatically. Let's create a new item. And let's say uh, user2, user2, at user2.com. Save this. Once you save this, you'll see that the ID is automatically set to two. Right, so this is because it's auto-incrementing. So we added two rows in this. Now let's create a new table called the article table. So I go back here and I click on create table. And let's create a table called the article table, right? And let's say ID, which is again auto incrementing. Let's set the title of the article, which is a text, and uh, content of the article, which is again text. Let's say that the article is an author, which we'll use the ID, which is an integer, right? So this is the author of the article. This should ideally come from the user table. Um, let's save this. Let's make ID the primary key for this table too. Right, so now we have these four columns and the primary key set to ID. So let's insert some values. So I won't insert an ID for the article. I'll say this is article one, 
this is my first article right and let's say the author id is one and i save this right so i have a element in the article table i have a row in the article table um, let's try to insert another item so let's insert um, another article this is also called article one and this is my first article by a different user right and let's say this author id is 99 and i save it so i have two articles and i have two users right but obviously the problem is that i have an article and this article's author does not actually exist in the author table right so the author there are only two authors one and two but there's no author for uh, there's no author called 99 and so how do we ensure that we can actually constrain these values to values that are in the author that are in the user table right so the way to do that is to create something called a foreign key constraint so let's create a foreign key constraint so that the author id is always a value from the user's id column so go to show structure you'll see a heading called foreign keys click on add foreign key set the target table to the user table you can say that the source is author id and the target is id and you can click on save so as soon as this happened you can see that we've gotten an error and now let's read this error right so this error says that key author id equal to 99 is not present in table user because we already have inconsistent data we're not able to add the foreign key so let's go and remove that inconsistent element so i select that element i click on delete right and that row is gone let's try to add the foreign key again my author id is the user's id click on save and you can see that the foreign key has been created so now if you try to insert another article and insert a random author id let's say 99 and you try to save it you'll get an error and the error says insert or update on table article violates the foreign key constraint article author id foreign key which is the name of the constraint that the database has given to your foreign key constraint right so if you change this to something that exists like two and save it the save goes through right so this is our basic modeling done so let's try to understand how all of what we did works so when we went to the imat console and clicked on uh, clicked on the buttons that said generate db credentials what actually happened is that there was a database or a dbms that was sitting on the db.imat.hasrap.io um, server and on this machine there was a postgres DB dbms the imat console contacted this dbms and ran operations to create the username the password and the database once these were successfully created, this data was taken back by the IMAT console and, um, and displayed to us on the UI. Once we went to the link db.imat.hasrap.io, right, uh, which is the link that we got when we clicked on generate DB credentials, um, our browser opened up another web app, and this is the adminer web app, which was a P which is a PHP web app. Um, this is what I call the DBMS console. Um, which can also be um, say PHP MyAdmin or RockMongo. And when, when we logged into the DBMS and when we created tables, when we created rows, whenever we did these things, what was happening was that we were giving commands to the web app via the UI and uh, by clicking on buttons and by entering data. And the web app was actually taking that information and running commands on the DBMS, right? So we were not actually running commands directly on the Postgres DBMS. We were running commands on the Adminer web app and this was taken and executed on the DBMS. So this is this is what was really happening, right? And the Adminer web app or the PHP web app and the Postgres DBMS were all were sitting together on the db.imat.hasrap.io machine, right? So on this machine, we have two servers, the web server, which listens to our commands and the DBMS server. You can also run this entire system locally by installing the Postgres DBMS on your system and by installing Adminer, which is the DBMS console on your system. There are various installation guides. I have provided links of the official guides for installing on Windows, Mac and Linux. You will also then have to install Adminer. Adminer is a very simple PHP application. So to install Adminer or rather to run Adminer, you will need to install PHP and Apache on your system. Just Google for how to install Apache and PHP on Windows or Linux or Mac and you'll find several very useful guides to getting this running on your system. A few important topics that we just briefly touched upon about which we'll get into more detail later are primary keys, nullable columns and default values for columns. So we'll go into more detail about each of these things in the next module.
In the next module, we are going to add categories and tags and then we are going to look at what SQL is. After that, we are going to connect our application to the database that we have made and we are going to fetch our article data of our web app from this database.